Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another insightful episode of the Digital Adoption Show, where we deep dive into topics shaping the modern workplace. I'm your host, Abhirami, Team Lead for Sales Development at Wapex, and I have a very special guest joining us today, Kiara Madron, who is the Global Talent and Performance Director over at Sodexo. In today's episode, we're going to be exploring the role of digital transformation in revolutionizing talent management performance decisions. So without any further delay, let me share more about our special guest for today. In her current role, Kiara is responsible for managing talent and performance processes globally across all of Sodexo's various entities and regions. This involves overseeing processes like performance reviews, calibration, and talent identification at Sodexo. Prior to her current role, Kiara worked in learning and development, setting up functional academies and leadership programs. She has over a decade of experience working across multiple different talent management roles at large-scale global companies, right from Sodexo, Unilever, Canon, and so forth. We're really excited to have you on the show today with us, Kiara. Thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely, our pleasure. So Kiara, just to start with, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience at Sodexo? Absolutely. So um, firstly, for those that don't know Sodexo, um, Sodexo is one of the largest employers in the world, providing services in food and facilities management um, with a workforce of above 430,000 uh, employees globally. We are present in 53 countries, so we have plenty of complexity to deal with in, in our roles. And I guess the benefit that comes with that is, of course, that diversity is a true strength, is how we really manage the business. And we describe ourselves as a people business. So there we go. You can imagine in the HR space, there is plenty of opportunities to add value. And myself, I have actually joined Sodexo a little over a decade ago, having spent some time before in other large organizations, predominantly focusing on learning topics. And I truly believe that in HR, we have a unique opportunity to facilitate experiences for our employees. And my work has been targeting how to reconnect those experiences with the organizational needs for identifying talent, managing performance, and ultimately deploy retention strategies through building an emotional connection to the organization. That's fascinating to hear, Kiara. In fact, I mean, it's very rare to talk to someone that has a decade of experience and really specializes in everything that they have done. So I'm really, really excited to dive into that. But since we have a lot of heavy duty topics ahead of us, I thought maybe we can start by breaking the ice. So I have buzz, just a couple of rapid fire questions to see how to really get to know you a little more. So I hope you're ready for those questions now. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to show it. So if you could switch roles with anybody at Sodexo for a day, who would it be and why? Okay, so I think it would probably be with our CEO, um, Sophie Bellon, and I would actually do a little bit of a strategic switch. So Sodexo is an official supporter for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. So I, I would actually wait for the switch and it's a bit towards the summer so that I can be present at the Olympics opening ceremony. So I'm sure it will be an event to remember. So there we go. We can do the switch in that specific yeah. day. It will be perfect for me. Oh, that's really smart planning. <laughs> one that's specific me. Perfect. Now, if you could eat one unusual food and you've been served that at a new restaurant, what would that be? Well, I must admit, I'm not generally very adventurous with food but if I uh, well a few years back I had the chance to go and visit Reunion Island which is a lovely little island in the middle of the Indian Ocean there I tasted guinea pig so both foods have been a bit a bit odd and it is a local delicacy and you know sometimes you just need to go and trust the locals so that's what I did and sort of and I must say, it was, it was actually quite delicious. So there we go. Trust the locals. Would you eat it again? Yes, I would probably. Actually. 
it's interesting to, you know, to connect the food with the culture and how, of course, you, you know, we were in a sort of, sort of social context and brands really wanted to show the local culture. And so this is one, one of their ways to show the local cultures and get me to try sort of the delicacy, the local delicacy. And it was a beautiful moment, actually, and one that I would cherish for sure. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think that definitely counts as adventurous to me. So I would definitely say you're pretty adventurous when it comes to food. <laughs> okay, Kiara, if you could implement any outrageous office policy at Select, so what would that be? Right, outrageous. I guess we need to keep it politically correct. Anyway, so <laughs> I, what I would say, well, Funnily enough, so Sodexo have got a practice that I quite like. So we have safety moments or diversity moments in which we bring focus to a topic around either safety or diversity at the beginning of a large meeting. So I would actually switch that and make it all about something fun, a joke, some sort of, I don't know, joke time Friday or joke time, <laughs> I don't know why it's always Friday, maybe yeah. joke time Wednesday. We know how smiling, how having a positive outlook really helps to reduce stress. And so I think it will be a, a very good initiative for the well-being of our employees to have a time in the week in which everybody brings a jump to a meeting, being virtual or non-virtual. And so that we can have a little bit more smiling in the working context. No, I absolutely love that. I feel like we spend so much time in our meetings having a joke or a smile to walk away from would be so much more fun. Well, I hope you bring that forward. <laughs> okay, so now what, Kiara, is the most memorable talent management mishap that you've had to encounter? And I'm sure there's been a lot given your decade-long career. Um, sure, there's absolutely plenty, but I guess... The most memorable are always the one that unfortunately you see very often happening or you hear very often happening. So if we think about something memorable, I would think about something that is recurring and unfortunately recurring. And often I observed it both in organizations that I work with or even from the stories you hear from your friends or from other colleagues working in different organizations. And I would say is when talent management is actually looking outside the organization rather than having a deep understanding of the talent that is already employed within our organization. And so I think this is really something that makes me a bit sad every time I hear it, because I think we often think that the labor's grass is always greener type of thing, but actually there is plenty of talent and potential in our organizations currently and often is overlooked because the next shiny thing just probably sits elsewhere or we think sits elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. I think we hear that quite a lot where most people tend to feel overlooked after a certain period of time. So it's wonderful to have leaders that can really give them that spotlight and look deep within before going outside to see what might already be there. So yes. I love that. And lastly, Kiara, if you could master one random skill overnight, what would that be? Oh, okay. Overnight. That's an interesting comment. <laughs> Very good. So this is something that I often think, because of course for work, we tend to travel. And I'd love to have some survival skills. And here is me. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Planning ahead in case something happens. But it's, it's definitely, so survival skills will definitely take me out of my comfort zone, but I like the idea of being able to look after yourself, even if you are on, you know, if you land on a desert island or you're in the middle of the jungle or, I don't know, you slip from a, a ship or into the ocean, hopefully, or a channel or any sort of water, hopefully with not many fishes, not very big fishes. And so something like this, I guess, the survival skills that can help you just overnight, all of a sudden you wake up and you know what to do in the forest. No, oh, absolutely. Did the pandemic influence the style of you? <laughs> maybe, maybe had, I don't know. But sometimes, you know, when you are sitting on a plane or something, you always think, what, well, you know, I don't know, you're watching a film. Uh, what would you do in that situation? You know, if you yeah. want to drop from a helicopter and then all of a sudden find yourself with a, at least a pocket knife and little to go on with. I mean, it's, it's one of those things you tense yourself outside your boundaries of your comfort 
And often nowadays our comfort, you know, if we live in a city, even if we live in a countryside is, uh, you know, a sheltered home and sort of quite a comfortable environment. So what would be of us if we were outside that? It's, it's quite a fascinating thought, I guess. No, absolutely. I'm going to, this time is going to keep me up at night. I'm really going to hone my Sorry. friends. I didn't mean to, to kind of uh, trigger nightmares, but <laughs> that's fine. Perfect. That was lovely, Kiara. I see like we really got to know you well. So now coming back into our topic for today. So Kiara, I have to ask you, how do you think digital transformation has really impacted the way organizations identify and attract top talent these days? Right. Well, in my view, technology has democratized many things. And for talent identification and attraction is meant that you have on your fingertips many profiles to do so many things that we do at organizational level. So you can build succession pipelines, you can expand the reach in new skills for your organization. You have many starting points to build diverse talent pools and all of that is in the public domain. So, you know, the sort of the type of data that we can find anywhere that now we professionally share quite regularly and without even thinking about it. And I think within an organization, digital transformation specifically has meant that if your employees have a strong sense of belonging, and even if they have a medium sense of belonging, really, and if your digital platforms are relatively easy to navigate, you often are data rich. You have many insights on your employees. It is how then you filter, you sort, you make sense of it that truly makes the difference for both the organization and the individual. You can now provide personalized attraction experiences. You can support employees to realize their aspirations and align personal purposes to the organizational one. So for me, it's it's made a huge difference. And at this stage, I really think that there is no excuse to a poorly delivered employee experience because HR has got the tool to be able to deliver exceptional ones. And this is really the main advancement, I guess. So all of the fact that we are data rich, we can really provide those experiences to really be able to be targeted, to attract with intent and to identify actually within our organization, the talent that we need to continue to advance in the business. So in essence, that's where I think we should be really as an HR function. Well, that's really lovely to hear. And it's a very interesting perspective, especially when you say that there is really no excuse for delivering anything better than a great onboarding experience. And so more power to you. So Kiara, what specific digital tools or technologies have proven most effective in enhancing the talent mobility process. So I'm just going to take talent and mobility, maybe from a, a bit of a wide sense and incorporating in this reflection, sort of also all that traditionally will sit around talent mobility. So I'm referring to your identification processes, as well as performance assessments or any other assessments you may run within an organization. Yeah. and. Also, I'm just going to stretch it out into what is a clear employee value proposition and then sort of a culture that fosters mobility, because all of these are components around the mobility concept. And Sodexo has recently gone through a change of technology and moved to SAP success factors. Now, of course, we are a very large international organization. We needed a partner that could deliver in many languages within the legal parameters of many countries. But in essence, if I look back at our previous experience, the feedback that we often got was that the experience wasn't really seamless and we had many tools and yes. many piecemeal tools that used to do different things at different point in time into the employee journey, but they weren't really coming together for the manager, for our people managers to navigate their team's data, nor the organization's data. And so organizationally, what we've done is we've seen in success factors, many functionality that help us as an organization to move the needle in delivering this holistic experience for our employees. 
And for experience, I incorporate mobility and I incorporate all of the different aspects of talent management within, within the organization. Because our employees don't see it as talent or performance or something else. They see it as a flow, as a journey. And one day they might be needing to explore a different opportunity within the organization. But another day they might be needing to get learning for actually performing in the current role. So it is really in the flow and on demand. So we're looking to move now onto more of a, a marketplace type of functionality and finally close the gap between the project work, the continuous learning for our organization so that actually we can finally leverage our scale and unlock more career development opportunities for our employees across the board. And this also means across geographies, across the country boundaries. And we really want to unlock all of this. And we've done it through moving to a one technology that really is helping us through deliver this type of experience. That's really interesting to hear as well, Tiara. In fact, my next question is really around some of the answers that you've given here. Since you mentioned that being data-led is really the way to pave the way ahead, what we'd really like to know is what types of talent management data and insight are you now able to generate within the new systems? Many, many, absolutely. And so, and this is also another reason why we have transitioned into a different technology. And we are actually continuing a journey that started a few years back. Because of course, you know, being a data-driven organization doesn't really, it's not a, a switch that you flick on and off. Unfortunately, it would be very long. <laughs> That was the case, but it's, it's really a journey and it's a journey in which, you know, we have many of our HR community to bring with us, but also many stakeholders that we need to continue bringing with us into this journey. So we want to become more talent, data-driven talent function and the newer system is providing many opportunities to discover what's the art of possible in the really. And so I, I think that one of the best choices that we've made along the way of this transition was really about tidying up and make our data architecture extremely sound. Because before, for a number of different reasons, we had a legacy of a data architecture, which wasn't very much standardized, nor very comparable, for example, from a geography to another. And so putting in place a sound data architecture really will enable us to be much more precise and rigorous in our insights. And so with these transitions, we have now also linked compensation and talent much more tightly in a job architecture that integrates both sides so that we now can filter data by job family, by function, by job level. So you can already see, I'm starting to paint a picture here of all of the different things that we can start to extract from this data flow, simply because we have been able to put our house in order. And then we also have linked that architecture onto competency areas. So now we have competency areas assigned to functions, and this will allow us to determine then areas of development strengths. And then we can be more targeted about uh, the development specifically for pool of individuals. So many, many things that we now started to put in place. And we also continue, of course, in our commitment to drive fairness in our performance evaluations. And we have specifically done that with the ability of identifying variances in performance rating behaviors by gender or management level, for example can now keep a pulse around the experience delivered during the year-end activities and the conversations between manager and employees around the time of the year so that we can get our employees to provide a view on whether these interactions have been satisfactory or not. So this is other aspects of, you know, the data architecture and sort of this, how do we use the analytics to actually drive much better and much targeted and rigorous decision making. And finally, the data insights are only helpful, of course, at an organizational level for the view they're making policy decisions, but it also is going to be redistributed as a value back to the individuals. 
We can now generate insights in your own performance, project yourselves uh, and your competency level on future opportunity with the organization and generally increase transparency and organizational processes for our employees. So there is a value chain that we have redistributed. So it's not only valuable for the organizational and of course, having all of these data points, it's a uh, field day for uh, someone in data analytics. But there is also elements that actually that value needs to be redistributed back to our employees and to make sure that they make the most of it, that they can understand where they are within the organizational context so that they can understand better and have a better awareness of where they can go in the next step within our organization. Wow, that's so interesting. I had, in fact, no idea that data could be leveraged in so many different ways from and mobility, performance ratings, and so forth. So that's something that I'm definitely taking back myself, I'm sure. So Kiara, just doubling down on that question, what are some ways that you have been able to leverage, let's say, the system's capabilities for calibration and analytics? So this is a very interesting question. Yes. We, as a vector, we activate a number of calibration activities around the globe in regular cycles during our fiscal years. And for Sodexo, so calibrating is still very much a conversation and many aspects are brought into that conversation. So the conclusion is often the data points that really remains of that conversation. I think we treat this very much as a talent exercise and we have been often asked by the business to really stretch outside this area and actually integrating talent data into more business sort of related data, such as turnover managed or what kind of leadership experience, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So I guess we have started a journey to actually be more rounded on how we do those type of calibrations. And I'll give you an example. We are now can input in the system, for example, the leadership experience of our employees is part of someone's profile. So that really starts to bring a different dimension into talent data that we use normally for calibrations. And the new technology is really enabling us to record the motions of these conversations as they happen in different parts of the globe for, first of all, at global level to have a, a clear view on what's happening. So it's having that view across the board, it's extremely important for us as a global business. And then it really enhances our ability to transfer knowledge beyond the people in the room from manager to the next manager across assignments and even over geographical boundaries. So it has also helped us being much more integrated with conversation as well as learning and sort of starting bringing things together. Because I think we often, as HR professionals, are very much focused around the identification of talent. And this is where the calibrations are really happening and are important. But then it's all about the development of these people and their next steps and how you bring them across their journey within the organization. So learning development is extremely important. And we are trying to push the boundaries then from calibration identification to really focus on development or career development for, and again, I'll say it again, I said it earlier, to really bring the value back to our employees, what it should be. Because of course, they make our organization what they are. They deliver the, the business outcomes. So we really are there to facilitate these movements. Yeah. It's really interesting take to note that it's really about empowering the value given to employees at the end of the day. Lastly, Kiara, where do you really see the future of digital transformation when it comes to talent management, let's say in the next five to 10 years? Well, things are going so fast. Who knows where we will be in five to 10 years? You know. So, and, you know, we've seen it everywhere. I think the artificial intelligence and natural language programming is already disrupting HR, the way we look at nurturing people within organizational context. And so I think HR now more than ever has really the opportunity to be at the heart of the business and sort of... Uh, Integrating talent data can be done well beyond the boundaries that we always had traditionally of HR. So we can actually be 
a true business maker and not just a supporting function. So for me, HR is really the place to be. This is where all of these new technologies will really um, unlock our value back to the organization. And I think this connection with us as individuals and the value we can bring to the business, to the world around us, is going to be absolutely great. So um, if that doesn't excite anybody, I don't know what can really. Yeah. Are there any emerging technologies that you're really excited about? I think that anything voice activated is going to be a game changer, especially if you think about the context of Sodex. So we have many employees that are at site level and often speak many languages. The difficulty we have in such context is that, of course, their literacy is not at the same levels as others. So really the voice activation, I think, will really help us reach those type of employees that naturally have been just on the recipients or more face-to-face -face type of interaction, et cetera. Now we can actually look at doing things digitally with them that we've never imagined in the past. And again, I'm a big believer of technology as a democratizing sort of tool. And so I'm really looking forward to see how we can then embrace much more than the management population and how can we make talent and opportunities also very much tangible for all of our employees all across the world, regardless of the role that they play in our businesses. Absolutely. And on that note, I think we've reached the end of yet another fantastic episode. I'm sure our audience has learned so much about the role of digital transformation when it comes to talent management driven performance decision. So here we are at the end of the digital adoption show. As parting thoughts, Kiara, we would love to know what is your personal motto to success? Oh, I, my personal motto? Okay, I'm not sure I have one. But I would say it's, it's okay not to have all the answers. Nobody does. And actually sometimes questions, a bit of curiosity and a bit of fun can do wonders. So that may be just a closing thought from me. Thank you. That's beautiful. <laughs> so thank you so much, Kiara, for joining with us today. And thank you to our listeners for joining in as well. Don't forget to leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or any other platform that you guys are tuning in from. So stay tuned until next time for more insightful discussions on the future of work.